doing? Oh, I'm here. Uh, it's been a little so-so day, but thank God I'm up and I'm on. <clears throat> I'm ready for Pastor Feed the Word into me. <laughs> Well, we, we know how to deal with so-so days. We deal with so-so days with the Word of God. Yes, indeed. So, um, good evening to everyone. Um, good evening, everybody. Yeah, we definitely... I'm with you, Vicki. I, I, I need some Bible study today. I need some Bible study today. Huh? But I, I'm so excited. I spent four hours in meetings today. Wow. And I'm going to spend... the. the I'm going to try to not keep y'all for four hours, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, some, we, we might need a good two, Pastor. I tell you the way I feel today. I, I probably need a good two. I ain't going to tell you four. I'll probably bring a pair back to sleep on you, but I need a good two. <laughs> uh, well, praise the Lord. All right. Well, hey, look, um, it is 630. We are after 630 now. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We are going to start in Exodus chapter 4, Exodus 4, and um, let us open with a word of prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for letting us get to this point. Lord, this has not been the best day uh, by some measures. It has not been an exciting day, but Lord, right now we are here in your presence. Yes, we are excited about seeing one another and being able to share and laugh and talk, but more so, Lord, we are excited about your word being taught. And so, Lord, I ask that you will help me especially block out all the stuff that I went through today, all the stuff that I went through this week, so that I can focus on what you are saying to me and so that I can say what you want said to your people. Lord God, open all of our ears spiritually and physically that we might hear from you and set us Help us to set it in our hearts that we might set our face to accomplish what we will learn from you this evening. Lord, I am excited because I believe that you are going to satisfy the hunger and thirst that we have for your word this evening. I thank you in advance for what you're about to do in and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. So um, so we're going to be in Exodus chapter four. I've already mentioned that. and uh, But let's a uh, little recap. Um, so in the book of Exodus, or at least the beginning part of Exodus, who is the character? Who is the sent male that we are talking about? Moses. Moses. Okay. Talking about Moses. And God called him. Where was God? Where was Moses when God called him? In the desert. In the desert. And why was he in the desert? Tending the sheep. Okay. But what was the bigger I'm reason? On the here. He was on the run from the Egyptian from Egypt. Because yep. he had slain, uh, slayed some of the Egyptian people. Okay. He had killed somebody, and he was on the run. And he got a job on the run. He had become a very respectable citizen. Yes. Despite that. But he was living away from God's land. He was living away from God's people. Yes. And that's where he was when God called him. Now, God called him using the burning bush. Uh, we talked about that, that God wants to speak to you. Um, and God said, hey, man, I am sending you. I need you to go to Pharaoh, and I need you to deliver my people. And Moses said, all right, let's go. He said, no. Oh, that's not what he said? No, no. that's not what he said. No. Okay, Mara, what did he say? He, he, he kept making excuses like I'm slow with speech. and uh, We haven't even got there yet, but yeah. They're not going to listen to me, like, who am I, you know, and how I'm going to prove uh, myself to them, and how I'm going to prove myself to, to them that who you are. Okay, so in chapter three, he asked two major questions, and Vicki already talked about one, who am I? Anybody know what the second, what was the second, anybody remember the second major question he asked? Who shall I say sent me? Yeah. So uh, essentially his first question, so he asked, who am I? And what was God's response to who am I? I want to say I am who I am, but that's not the part that you was looking for. Nope, not yet. Uh, he said that I am the Lord. I have surely, uh, it's in four, five, or six. Let me see. Karen, you gonna say something? 
Huh? Say about him? Him? That's right. Essentially, he's not talking a- about you because I'm sending you. I'm yeah. sending you. And then that's when Moses asked the second question. Well, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> and that's where, Vicky, where you just were. I am yeah. who I am. Okay. And so, um, again, I don't think any of you recognize any of these questions from yourself and your own call, but you might know some people that when God called them, they question, they say, well, who am I? Why would you send me? And then they might have said, well, you know, who are you? And getting to understand, because what he's pointing to as, you know, we always give Brother Wade credit for this. He was pointing to that relationship. Yes, I, I, I am. I am important because I have relationship with you. And if you go out of your relationship with me, you will be successful. And so one of our problems is, is that we often want to go on our own. I can do this. I'm grown. You know, y'all remember all y'all who had kids, you know, when they got to that point that they thought, oh, I can go do this by myself. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. God deals with that every day. Yes. With us. Sometimes look, we, we try to do it by ourselves and we realize we don't realize we're actually not letting God handle it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so there, there is that relationship piece. And God was reminding Moses in the sent moment, in this moment of his calling, hey, I'm going with you. And, and that probably of, of all the things we talk about being sent, because usually when we think of being sent, that means somebody like if I send Karen, you know, you come to you come over to my house. I say, Karen, I need you to go to the store. I'm sending you to the store. That implies you're going to the store and I'm staying here. Yeah. So you're going by yourself. Mm -hmm. But that's not the way God works. Right. God says, I'm sending you and Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with you. Mm -hmm. And that, that understanding is something that we have got to hold on to because if God is with us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Right then we should not be concerned about what we're getting ready to experience because God is with us. That was the point of Ayana grabbing my hand and wanting to go places where she she wasn't very confident, but all of a sudden she was more confident. Why? Because I was with her. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't go into the dark part of the house by herself, right? but she would go with me because she believed I was going to protect her. Now, how would I feel if I said, come on, baby, let's go. I ain't going over there. Well, come on, I'm with you. I don't care if you're with me. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, there are those who've done that with God. God said, I'm going to go with you. Mm-hmm. I still ain't going. <laughs> and so what does that say about our faith? Oh, I believe God until he tells me to do something that I think is scary. Yeah. All right. And so we, we really need to um, we really need to figure we really need to figure that out. OK, so that that's chapter three. So. Um, Let's let's jump into chapter four. Um, let's see, uh, Karen, can you give me chapter four, uh, Exodus four? Give me one through nine. Okay. Then Moses answered, "What if they won't believe me?" and will not obey me, but say, the Lord did not appear to you. The Lord asked him, what is it that, that, what is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. Then he said, throw it on the ground. He threw it on the ground and it became a snake. Moses ran from it, but the Lord told him, stretch out your hand and grab it by the tail. So he stretched out his hand and caught it and it became a staff in his hand. This will take place, he continued, so that so they will believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. In addition, the Lord said to him, put your hand inside your cult. He put his hand inside his cult, and when he put it out, his hand was diseased like snow. Then he said, put your hand back inside your cloak. He put his hand back inside his cloak and when he took it out, it had again begun like the rest of his skin. If they will not believe you and will not respond to the evidence of the first sign, they may believe the evidence of the second sign. 
And if they don't believe even these two signs or listen to what you say, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. The water will take the water you take from the Nile will become blood on the ground. All right. Okay, great. Okay, so first question, who am I? Second question, who are you? What's the third question Moses asked? What if they don't believe me? What if they don't believe me? What if they don't believe me? Now, I got to be honest. Here is a question. I, you know, again, I've told you, I haven't fought so much with question two. I've definitely fought with question one. And I show sure enough every Sunday fight with question three. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell them all this, God. What if they don't believe me? I mean, what if I'm just going to go in and I'm just, I, I'm talking and they looking at me like, God ain't talking to you. And, and, and so we get again, Moses uh, displaying his lack of confidence in the fact that God has sent him. All right. And so he asked the question, how does God answer the question? He showed him some signs, some things to do. Okay. So actually, he answered his question with a question. What, what was God? Moses said, what if they don't believe me? Then he said, tell them I'm the, uh, right. I am the father and the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Okay. Actually, we got something before that. He said, what is that in your hand? Send somebody ah. else, Lord. Send somebody else. Nope. We haven't got there yet, Sister Lampkins. I know you, 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 hey, you, is, you in the advanced in class. Hand? We in the slow class. Um, yes. Yeah, my mama said it. Yeah. Moses asked, what if they don't believe me? And God asked him, what's in your hand? Yeah. Yeah. He answered his question. Don't you hate when people answer your question with a question? Yes. Yes. I hate it. We, we, we hate that. You know, I, look, I, yeah. I need an answer. Don't right. answer my question with a question. Yeah. But that's exactly what God did. And I, I, I you know, Moses, I mean, and so God asked him, what's in your hand? So what was in his hand? Staff. Staff. The staff. What's a staff? A stick. A stick. <laughs> a stick. Rod. I mean, right. A yes. rod. Yes. He had a big old stick in his hand. Yeah. Well, it, it, he, he was watching sheep, so it's probably a shepherd's hook. I mean, essentially, it's a, but you know, a shepherd's hook, you know, because you know what, we so used to being all sharp and formed and everything. Come on now. I mean, it, it was it, a stick. It, it's, probably a, it's probably a really big stick. Yeah. That you some stuff with, you know, hey, we do it. But the bottom line is he had a stick. Right. Yeah. Now, he has a stick. What does God tell him to do with the stick? Throw it down. Throw it on the ground. Throw it down. The ground. Throw it down. And he throws it down, and what happens? It turns, it turns into the snake. And what does Moses do? Jump. He ran. He did what you're supposed to do when you see a snake. He ran. He ran. <laughs> Come on now. God, did God tell him, hey, throw it down and it'll become a snake? No. No, no. no he told him that later. This time he didn't tell him that. He just said, throw it down. Yes. And that thing became a snake. And he was like, oh. Yes. And then. And, uh, and, cause I'm going to tie this together, but I, I love this story. And then, so he runs from it because that's what yeah. smart people do when they see a snake. Trinity, yeah. I know you watching me. I know you do something different when you see snakes, but the rest of us, yeah. we got some sense. We run. Yeah. Trinity <laughs> likes snakes. I don't well, think actually, I'd be close enough to go back and pick up the tail by then. Yeah, yeah. So so what So what? Did, what did God tell him to do? So he, he ran away and then God said, do what? Pick up his tail. Mr. Washington, he said, pick it up by what? The tail. tail. Now, I don't know about y'all. See, I, I love National Geographic Channel. And yeah. you, know, I know I, I, you know I love Naked and Afraid, and I watch all that stuff. And yeah. what does any good snake handler, if you're going to grab a snake, how do they tell you to grab a snake? By the head. head. You grab a snake by the head. Yeah, because yeah. if you don't grab it by the head, it's gonna, gonna come back and bite you. So yeah. I got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I got an issue with this whole scene right here. 
<laughs> first, <laughs> first, I asked you a question, God, and and then you answer my question with a question. And you want to talk about this stick in my hand. What does this stick in my hand got to do with anything? Right. And then you tell me to throw down a stick. So I throw down a stick because I'm obedient. I'm trying to be obedient. And right. then that's what they turn into a snake. I don't know what you're doing now. Yeah. Because I heard about snakes. And my great, 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 great grandmother, Eve, she talked to a snake and it didn't go out. It didn't go well for her. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what this is all about. And then you're going to tell me to grab the snake, grab what I'm running from, but I'm grabbing it from the wrong end. This is a problem. <laughs> but let me paint this picture for you. When you ask, why would they listen to me? When you ask one of these questions, God's going to ask you the exact same question that he just asked Moses. What's in your hand? Because, I, and you're going to hear me say this a lot, because, you know, God's been doing something, you know, last week, everything was in the same box. And this week, everything's in the same box. God has already prepared you for what he is calling you to do. When it comes to what God wants to use in you, you already have it. You talk about, well, I need more education. I need more money. I need a bigger church. I need a bigger car. I need this. I need that. God's like, you've already got everything I need you to have. You notice God did not say, hey, go over there and get a stick. I want you to use what's already in your hand. Brothers and sisters, what's in your hand? What gift, talent, ability is in your hand? You look at it and you say, well, it's just a stick. It's just an ability to do math. It's just an ability to sing. It's just ability to talk. Whatever it is, God says, what do you have? Because I want to use that. And how do I use it? He throws it down. I want you to use it. I want you to put it out there. I want you to release it. Because when you release it, I'm going to do something amazing. And I can tell you right now, many of us have played Moses because we tried it. We, we tried to use what he gave us and it, something happened and we ran from it. And some of us are still running from our gift. We're still running from it, what it looked like when God took it. See, it was okay when we used it at school. It was okay when we used it at home. It was okay when we used it as work. But when we used it for God, all of a sudden it became scary and we didn't want to deal with it anymore. And we ran from it. And God is telling you tonight, go pick it back up because I need you to use it again. I, I, I got it. it. It's scary. It is scary. I, I, and, and maybe, you know what? I, you know, I'm going to apologize to y'all. I'm going to do a whole year of Bible studies just for me. And y'all just going to listen to me. Talk to me because I have to deal with the fact of the fact that you people come every week. Oh. My stomach upset all the time. Yeah, y'all tune in to hear what I got to say because you believe. Vicky said it. I, I, I'm just tuning in so that I can hear my pastor teach me something. That's pressure. And I want to run. Oh, y'all, I don't know what happened. Zoom ain't working tonight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe next week, because it's scary. The gift is scary. Yes. Because you don't understand what God is doing. Why would, I'm already trying to, I still don't understand me, but why would they listen to me? He said, just use what I've already gave you. Yeah. People keep asking me, hey, you gonna go to seminary? I'm like, well, I mean, do I need to? Maybe I need to go to seminary so I can teach better. God, God saying, did I tell you to go to seminary? I'm telling you to use what's already in your hands. I've already put everything in you that you need for right now. Now, if you need something else, I'll put that in you too, or I'll tell you where to go get it, but right now. And so I need each one of us to understand that what God needs from us is already in us. And he wants us to use it. And he wants us to keep using it. Hey, throw it down, pick it up. Throw it down, pick it up. Throw it down, pick it up. Bob, you don't preach once. You keep doing it. Yes. And so God gave him these things. Why? Really in answer to the question. What if they won't listen? Because here's what you also have to understand. Actually, well, he, he, did the, he did the snake trick. He picked that up. And then God said, okay, um, let's see. 
Let's see. Um, let's see. Wait, 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 where, where, where am I going? Put his uh, hand in his bosom. Yes. Yes. Again, take your hand. Mm -hmm. Take what you already have. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do something with it. He sticks it in. He sticks it in his jacket. He pulls it out. Ah! It's, mm -hmm. it's white like snow. It's leprous. That's leprous. a problem because there ain't no cure yeah. for leprosy. We got an issue. But he's like, oh, put it back in, put it back out. Oh, 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 I know. I got tricks. I got tricks. I can do some tricks. And then, and then after he does the hand trick, then God says, hey, then I got this water trick. Take some water, pour it out, it'll become blood. So a couple of things that I want to share with you on this. God told him to do, he was supposed to go show the miracles to them first or talk to them first. Talk to them first. He was supposed to talk to them first. All of the signs were supposed to back up what he said. Yes. See, faith comes by hearing. hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. See, it's too many of us, we want to do all the work and hope people will just catch the message. But the message is supposed to come first. The message, he said, what if they don't believe me? Well, the only way they could not believe him is if he had told them he's supposed to speak something. God has sent me. Well, what if they don't believe me? Then show them the signs that you are connected to me. See, too many of us, we want to show some signs and think, oh they'll, oh, they'll get it. No, we got, we have to speak something. Speak the word in season and out of season. That, that's not just for me as the pastor. Everybody's talking about be ye also ready. You know, um, um, Mr. Washington, uh, when I started preaching, uh, the, the bishop told me, don't ever go into a church without a message. Mm -hmm. You make sure every time, I was like, why would I do that? I should know that I'm preaching. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's happened to me at least six times uh -huh. that I have showed up at the church on Sunday morning, just visiting. Matter of fact, the first time I came to church here in, in Shreveport, I walked in and I don't usually tell, I don't like to tell people that I'm a pastor, but I have a, I have a fan club that, that lives with me. And sometimes she feels the need to tell everybody. <laughs> and so I'm good. I'm getting ready to sit down in the pews and just enjoy a service because we just got here. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And the pastor says, hey, your wife just told me you, 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 you a preacher. <laughs> yes, sir. Would you like to preach today? <laughs> it is an unwritten rule in the church that if someone asks you to preach, you preach. You, preach. you don't say, oh, no, no, no. No. So I had been in Shreveport for one day and I was preaching. Always be ready. But see, y'all think, oh, well, you a preacher. You're supposed to be ready. No, Karen, you're supposed to be ready. Mr. Washington, yeah. I know you don't talk much, but you're supposed to be ready. Yeah. <laughs> Sister Lampkins, I know you talk much, but you still need to be ready. <laughs> yeah. We All have right. to be ready. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, you laugh. <laughs> I am. I, I, I'm sorry. I had to get that one out. We've got to be ready to speak the word. Yes, it's great to show the example. And they the, the walk should match the talk, but they need to hear the talk because otherwise they just think you're a good person. And oh, well, I'll do what they're doing, but they're doing it, but they're not doing it for the right reason. You're doing it because you are saved. They're doing it trying to get saved and it doesn't work that way. And so we have to have some word to go with it. And when we use the gifts, talents, and abilities that he gave us, then when that lines up, people will come to believe us. And not just believe us, believe the word that we say. Okay, so here's real cool. So, so hey, somebody tell me, why did he give him three signs? So the people can understand. So the people well, can he gave him two at first, and then he said, if they don't believe the first two I give you, then pour the water on the ground, it's going to turn to blood. So, so you, you know what I hear in that? They might not what? believe that either. But I'm, yeah. but, but you, but there's more you can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's more you can do. Oh, yeah. oh well, I mean, hey, they should believe the snake trick. Well, that's cool. Somebody ain't gonna believe that. 
but there's still more that you can do because I sent you to these people. Mm. And until you do all that you can do, and now once you do all you do, they don't believe, hey, deuces, let's go. But too often we walk in and say, you need to believe Jesus. And they say, uh, no, oh, well, I'm done with you. <laughs> was, was that it? Was it, was it? Now that could be all God sent you to do is say, say it once. But somehow I believe there's some folks that y'all, you're supposed to still be demonstrating the truth of what you said to them. Yeah. And don't quit. He's given you more ability than you're giving yourself credit for. He didn't just give Moses a staff. Moses, you got a staff, you got your own hand, and I'll let you use something outside of yourself. But you are using it on my behalf. These were not parlor tricks. This was not Moses getting on um, um, America's Got Talent. Israel's Got Talent. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, this was about using it to demonstrate his connection to God. And when you use your gift rightly, you are demonstrating your connection to God. Because you'll get people who say, well, ooh, I didn't know you could do that. Mm, well, yeah, God is good. When, when, uh, when the chef, uh, well, when the baker and the butler came to uh, Joseph and said, hey, can you interpret my dream? What did he say? Anybody remember what he said? Butter or with uh, olive oil? <laughs> Anybody remember what he said? The kingdom yeah. said, hey, interpret my dream. Who, who passed the I've been yeah. interrupted? Huh? Asked the question and Monica interrupted, and I'm sorry I didn't hear. Okay, the question he was did, when, he did it actually. Uh, but he, but he said something first. Uh, so <laughs> the baker and the butler, when they when Joseph joined them in jail, they had their dreams, and yeah. then they went to Joseph and said, "Hey, man, can you interpret our dreams?" And Joseph had a very interesting response. He he eventually did it, but he said something first. Did, did he say that he would answer it if they would do tell the king yeah. about him? No, nope. he told them that later. Oh. He told them to get ready to get out of here, and I need you to remember me when you get out. Yeah. What he said was, the power is not in me. God interprets dreams. Oh. He made it clear that the gift that I have, it's, from it's not just about me, it's from God. And see, one of the problems many of us have is we start to think it's all us. <laughs> well, look no. at what I can do. No, Moses, no. look at what I can do, how I can throw this down. Look at how I can make my, nah, Moses. Mm -hmm. You need to remember what you do, you do. Because God has empowered you to do. And as a matter of fact, the one time he forgot, y'all remember this story. Um, God told him to go and I need you to speak to the rock. Yep. And yeah. get water. Yeah, and Moses he walked in front that. of the people. Yeah. What'd he do? Anybody remember? He hit the rock. And even before he hit the rock, he said, he said this. He said, You nasty people. This is the Bob Payne paraphrase. Yeah. He was you angry nasty with people. Do yeah. I have to get water out of the rock from you for you again? Yeah. I. <laughs> God said, no way. Moses? <laughs> you don't have the power to make rock water come. <laughs> when you get caught up and you start to believe your own press mm -hmm. it's going to be tough to be sent because now it's all about me and look at what I can do and one thing God will not do is share his glory yeah. and so mm -hmm. Moses walked around the desert for 40 years That's right. and didn't get into the promised land because he forgot that he was sent and he wasn't the one who was doing the sending. It wasn't all about him. Yeah. And, and too many of us, we've been walking around this mountain for a long time that we forgot we were sent. It's not us. Because if, it, if, it, if it's us, then we can decide whether or not we go or not. But if we're sent, we're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to go. And we're going on the behalf of somebody else. Okay, so Moses, what's in your hand? Mara, what's in your hand? Vicky, what's in your hands? What has God put in you that he wants to you? He is sending you already. You, you've got everything you need right now to do what he's telling you to do right now. You don't need no money. You don't need an education. You don't need a better car. You don't need to move to a different area. You just need to do what he made you to do right now in this moment. 
Okay, questions or comments? Exodus 4, 1 through 9. Sister Lampkins, will you please read Exodus 4, 10 through 17? Okay. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Mm -hmm. Who makes them deaf or mute? Yes. Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Mm -hmm. Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. So stop but there. Moses stop, 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 said. Stop there, stop there, stop there. Stop there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, thank you, ma'am. Um, I know none of you have ever complained. Because somebody break it down for me. Put it in your own words. What is Moses saying? I can't somebody do it. Else? I'm not qualified. He can't do it. I can't do it. I, I just yeah. can't do it. I just can't do it. He started, he started saying what he can't do instead of what God wanted him to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't talk right. Instead of doing everything, it's all about him and not about who it's supposed to be about. Okay. I stutter. Mm -hmm. I just can't. I can't do it. I uh, I stutter when I talk. I just yep. can't do it. Got it. Got it. Go ahead, Karen. Oh, Moses. To me, he seems like he's saying like he's not confident, low low self esteem. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Excuses. Mm -hmm. Excuses. Which it is excuses i can't talk and, and so really when we talk about i can't do this when we have that conversation with god and i'm betting at least more than one person besides the brother in the marine maroon shirt talking right now has had this conversation with god is i just can't i can't and i don't know what your excuse was i'm not old enough i i'm too young i'm too old how old was moses by the way 80 80 80. Mm, see everybody, yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah, I'm too old. I can't do that. But I got all these problems. I got this. I got that. Did God know? If, if Moses did, you know, we all we all just assume that he did. Right. If Moses did have a stuttering problem, did yeah. God know about that before he called him? Yes. 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 yes he when he, he was standing there in front of Mo, God, I, 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 I can't talk. Right. God went, ooh, ooh, that's a good point, Mo. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that. <laughs> See, yeah. and here's what's funny. We laugh at Moses. Mm -hmm. We laugh at Moses for having this conversation with God. And right now, Moses is laughing at us because we've had the same conversation. Mm -hmm. We've talked to God about why we can't do anything. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, I'm just a woman. No one in my family's ever done that. I can't do that. I didn't go to school. I didn't go to seminary. These people won't listen to me. We've got all these excuses. And Mo's up there, I can't wait till you get up here. You've been <laughs> laughing at me for years. I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you and talk to you. Talking about me for saying that to God, you done said the same thing. Uh. The only difference is ain't nobody writing down when you said it. Uh -huh. And we have all these excuses, but our excuses aren't about us. Our excuses are really about him. Because we are saying, you picked the wrong person. Now, of course, because we good holy folk. Oh, I believe God. I trust him. I love the Lord, except when he sends me to do something. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm like God you got the wrong one because I and, and he had oh I, I can't talk I mean and you want me to talk why would you send me because you know I can't talk I, I was I couldn't talk before we met I can't talk now but again I, I've said this to you before if God, if God had to choose okay the, the Indianapolis 500 is coming up and God has to, gets to pick which car he wants to drive. 
There's a brand new Ferrari sitting there, and there's a 1972 Ford Pinto. <laughs> Which car do you think God's going to choose? The Pinto. Oh. He can make it win. God's going to choose it. Exactly. God's going to choose the Pinto because God gets no glory if he wins in the car that's supposed to win. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. But if he takes a 72 Pinto <laughs> and laps Ferraris, nobody's going to give, Ooh, that's a bad Pinto. Well, man, nobody ever said that. Mm -hmm. But we're going to look at the driver and go, that's a bad man right there. Mm -hmm. It makes so much sense to me that Moses can't speak or thinks he can't speak and God says, I want you to speak. Why would God send you to do what you think you can do? Because then you won't need him. Mm. I, I love it when he says, he says, hey, look, man. Um, it, now, verse uh, 12, now go. I will help you speak. Yeah. And I will teach you what to say. Yeah. Ooh, you're talking about a speech coach. Talking about God, you know, you, you, you ever watch him when Congress, when Congress speaks and the guy's sitting there and he's sitting there next to his lawyer and they ask a question and they go, seven. <laughs> you know, they, 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 before they say anything, they got to do this thing and they block the microphone and they have a conversation. God said, come on, Moses, we'll do that. Yeah. I will work with you. And God is look so so not only is God giving you what you need, He's saying where you think you're weak, yes. I will build that up. Yeah, I will work with that. I got no problem. Matter of fact, I'm excited to work with that because people say well, you, Moses was never able to talk. How Moses talking like that? Because God is with him. And God is looking at you going, yes, you can tell me about all your faults. You can tell me about why it doesn't work. You can tell me all of this stuff, but guess what? I will, I can work with that. I, I can work with your broken down places. I can work with your excuses. I, I, I'm good. I, I am that good that I can take someone who can't talk and send them to talk to the most powerful person in the world. Yep. I, I can take someone who can't read and have them write books. I, I can take someone who can't walk and have them run marathons. I can do that because I am God. Who made man's mouth? <laughs> and so he's not calling. I mean, you know what? The, here's the beautiful thing. Did you notice that God never said, oh, Moses, don't worry. You can talk. Uh -uh. <laughs> God never tried to convince Moses that he could do it. No. He tried to remind him that I will do it through you. Uh -huh. And so in the midst of our excuses, again, maybe you're not making it, you, you, you guys are good. You, you guys are doing everything that God has sent you to do. So it's just the brothers in the ties right now that are having this issue. That God is just trying to remind us, I'm sending you, but I'm going to go with you and I'm going to do it through you. You don't have to think of what to say. Matter of fact, in the New Testament, Jesus will say, hey, don't worry about when they bring you before courts, don't even worry about what you're going to say, because the Spirit will teach you. Mm -hmm. God said, I, I, can, I can work with you wherever you are, as long as you are available to me. I know you don't feel like you can do it, but that's okay. That's what I'm here for. If we could do it without him, we wouldn't need him. I need the Lord. We need to lead, need the Lord for more than just paying our rent. We need to need the Lord for more than just getting us out of the hospital and making us feel better. We need to need the Lord when we are doing the purpose that he sent us to do. And somewhere, somebody tell me, what does uh, Philippians 4.13 say? I'll take a please. Do all things through Christ, Christ strengthen me. me. Thank you. State the whole state of Florida got that one. So <laughs> let, let's break that down. I can try to do all things. I can do. I can. I can do. Oh, so so that's a statement of confidence. Yeah. That is a statement of ability. 
So I can do all things because I went to the right church and I got enough education. No. I can do all things because I have enough money in the bank. No. Mm -mm. I can do all things because um, we got a Democratic president now. No. No. I can do all things. Why? You're a Christ. 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 Okay, so. If, and we know the scripture. We got little books with the scriptures. Some of us got it in our house. We, oh, I can do all things. So if the word says I can do all things, and then God says, hey, I need you to do this thing, and you say, I can't do that. <laughs> we have a problem, Houston. <laughs> we have a problem. Yes. The word says, I can. We say, I can't. We forget. Is that what it is? We forget. <laughs> we forget. Okay, yeah. that's good. My mama said, we forget. Yeah. You know, that's that stuff. You know what? That, that's that forget. Like when my mama said, hey, why do you wash those dishes? I forgot. <laughs> work, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. hey, 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 wait, say it again, mom. Say it again. <laughs> no, we didn't. I forget. Said it didn't work then. <laughs> it didn't work then. And so, why do we think it works with God? <laughs> it didn't work with our parents, but we yeah. think God going to go, oh, that's okay. If, that's okay, baby. We know yeah. you forgot. That's all right. You'll get it next time. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, that's not where my mom patted me when I forgot to do the laundry, when I forgot to <laughs> wash the dishes. She she didn't pat me here, just so y'all oh. know. <laughs> I'm trying to look all innocent now, but. Well, we still striving. We yeah, that's striving. right. That's right. We still striving. <laughs> but that's, but that, look, th this is why the word has got to be more than just something we read and recite. Because yeah. we all know it. Oh, God, I can do all things. But it, it, it's not. I think I shared with you before, um, there was a, a time my best friend, um, he could not understand a math class that we were taking together. And I went over to his house and I think I spent two or three hours teaching him how to do this before we had a big test. Well, the next day we took the test. He made a 97. I wanna say I made like a 52. What? I, <laughs> That's the, same thing. That's the same thing I said. Now, I will not confirm or deny that I had to sign my parents' name on that test. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> but, but here's the problem. I knew the work. I knew how to do it. Yeah. But I failed to apply it. Yeah. Yeah. Many of us, we've been in church. Other, let me see. Yeah, there, there's almost, there, there's a few hundred years of Bible study. I bet if we count up the number of Bibles, just the Bibles that the, those of us who are on the Zoom screen right now own, we've got more Bibles in some countries. Yeah. So we know the word, but we're getting a 52 on the test because we won't apply it. Mm -hmm. I can do all things, not because I'm smart enough, not because I'm good enough. Not because I'm strong enough, not because I got talent and skills and I know the right people and I got enough money. I can do all things through Christ. Now, either it's true or it's not. It's not, it's kind of like being kind of pregnant. Well, you kind of pregnant. Mm. No, mm. You, you pregnant or you not. It's true or it's not. And so we have to decide and don't say it now because the Bible says you will be held uh, every word that you speak will be accountable. You'll be accountable for that. And so I don't want you to go, oh, I believe it, Pastor. I believe it. Because as soon as you do, God's going to whisper in your ear, hey, I need you to go talk to somebody. Well, I can't do that, God. <laughs> I need you to go talk to your brother. Mm -hmm. I need you to go talk to that person at work. Mm, God, get somebody else. Get <laughs> Sister Martha. You know, she could. She fired up for you, God. <laughs> but I thought you just said you can do all things. And what I'm asking you to do is a do thing. <laughs> and so we, we've got to make it up. This is renewing our minds again. Make it up in our mind. Either we believe it or we don't. And, and if you don't believe it, hey, fine, cool. Just go about your life. 
but we've got to stop saying we believe it on Sunday and Monday night and Wednesday night and not living it every other day. We are wasting our time. I'm sure we could be doing something else with our time besides sitting here and learning stuff that we're not going to apply. It, isn't that the problem we had with school? How many of you ever said you were sitting in a class and said, when am I ever going to use this? In math. Who going to ask? Hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 math is the most important class you ever took. You still <laughs> Yeah. Now, no one's asked you to diagram a sentence <laughs> no. since you no. got out of that English class. <laughs> Probably Man. nobody has asked you when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. <laughs> but we sure enough asked you to add something. Mm -hmm. So just be real clear now. Don't be messing with the math class. <laughs> <laughs> but we all sat. We've all sat in a class and wondered what am I supposed to do with this? And I, I'm a little worried that we sit in church and Bible study and do the same thing. We show up because we showed up at school. My parents made me go to, I never missed a day of school. And some of us never miss a day of church. But do we have any plans to actually use what we went there for? Because I guarantee you, God has an intention to give us an opportunity to use it. But if we just hear, hey, you know what? I had, I had perfect attendance, kindergarten through 12th grade, never miss a day. You know what? That didn't get me a job. It didn't get me into college. And really, nobody cares. And some of us are walking around, well, I got perfect church attendance. I go to church. I've been to church every Sunday. Even when it was raining, I went to church. I went to church on the good days and the bad days. I got perfect attendance. But if you never applied anything that you learned, you wasted your time. And so Moses says, I can't do it. But the word says, you can. You have excuses. And God, I'm not sure God really cares about your excuses because God knows that he's going with you. And wherever you're short, he's going to make up for that. Actually, there's another verse that we like in, Ephesians, in Philippians. Philippians 4.19. Anybody? Anybody? My God. will supply all my needs. He shall supply all my needs. With riches and glory. According to my ability. His riches. Oh, according to his riches. His <laughs> so when I go somewhere and I don't have enough and I need something, I got to find it on my own. No. No? Oh, because he came with me. Yes. And he said he would supply, supply my needs. All your needs. He, he would supply my needs. Mm -hmm. we, we, we actually had this uh, one time as Ayana was getting older and, you know, trying to teach her how to handle money and do stuff and go shopping. And we went to we went to that store whose name I won't mention because y'all laugh at me every time I mention it. But we went to that store. And she, oh, she grabbed some stuff. Oh, <laughs> I'll be putting my business all out in the streets. <laughs> and we, we grabbed some stuff and mm -hmm. I knew how much money she had. And I was doing the math. And I saw it in her hands. And what was in her hands was more than what was in her pocket. It was greater than, you know. Uh huh. Greater than. But I let her go because I'm trying to teach her a lesson. And, yeah. and so we get up to the little register and we do this. And, you know, the woman says, that'll be 15 22 And she pulled out a $10 bill. <laughs> <laughs> We got a problem. Yeah. And I explained to her, hey, this is why you need to make sure what you're picking up, you got enough. But because I'm here and I paid the rest of it, oh. I supplied her need. Her need. Her need. Yeah. Not according to her riches, because she ain't had enough. <laughs> right. I supplied according to what I had. Yes. Right. 
Mm -hmm. God wants to do the same thing with you. Yeah. Well, I don't have enough. I don't have enough to do that. I don't have enough to start that business. I don't have enough to write that book. I don't have enough to teach that class. <sighs> and he's standing there, you going, but I do. And if you put what you got with my enough, great things will happen. Okay? All right. Um, let's see. Sister Jackie. Yes, sir. Can you pick up uh, and give me uh, Exodus 4 and read 13 through uh, 17? 13 through 17. But he said, Oh, Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. So the so the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth. And I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people. And he himself shall be as a mouth for you. And you shall be him as God. Be to him as God. And you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do the signs. All right. Moses got his brother coming. Okay, so... God, he, he didn't ask, who am I? Yeah. He didn't ask, who are you? He yes. didn't ask, what if they won't listen? He yes. didn't said, I can't talk. I can't do it. Finally, mm. he has one last request. What does he, what does he tell God? What does he ask God? Send someone else. Please. Please, please send someone else. Please send someone else. My Bible says, please send someone please. else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please. I don't even care who. Yep. And someone else. And God said, okay, Moses. No, God was angry. No, he, he got angry. angry. Uh, he got mad at him. Yeah. He got mad at him and struck him down. No. no. He got mad at him. I say, what about brother. your brother? He can talk. <laughs> okay. So no, I ain't striking now. So so check it out. So first thing I want to deal with before I even get to his brother. Yeah. Um Big Mama told us what? Don't question God. Mm -hmm. And so God got angry. Yes. But he didn't strike Moses dead. Mm -mm. Actually, oh. he did say that. Well, actually, I will deal with the Aaron part right now. He said, hey, um, your Aaron, your brother's coming. And he'll be glad to see you. Did God say, I'm going, you know what, Moses? I'm going to send Aaron instead of you. Oh. No, he didn't no. say that. No. He didn't? But he mad, he mad at Moses. He said, I know he can yeah. speak well. He can speak well, yep. Yeah. I know he can speak well, so, so he's going to send Aaron by himself, right? Because that makes so, sense. It, make, it makes sense to send Aaron by himself. No, he's no, still going to send Aaron with he's him. He's going to send both of them, and he's going yeah. to speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and then he will help both of you speak and teach what to say and do. So Aaron going to be disposed. He will speak to the people the for you. Okay. Okay. So God was mad at him. Uh-huh. But Romans 11, 29 showed up. Anybody tell me what it is. Oh, I don't know what that is. The gift of calling being revocable. The <laughs> gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Uh -huh. Again, we see the perf. This is this is probably the best picture out of all of them. The Bible literally says God's anger kindled, but even the anger of God did not take away the purpose of Moses. Yeah, he was still called, mm -hmm. even though God was angry. Yeah. <clears throat> God said, okay, fine. Look, if you don't want to do it my way, you still gonna do it. That's right. Yeah. You still gonna do it. I will let I will let Aaron go with you if that's what it's gonna take, because you're gonna go. Mm -hmm. Because it's still your call. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna let Mary, you know, and, and I think it's funny to say, well, you know, Aaron can speak, and guys like I, I don't really care if Aaron can speak, but fine. If it'll make you feel better, I'll send your older brother with you. Yeah. But you're still going to go. Mm-hmm. And as a matter of fact, you, oh, go ahead. You're gonna, you're gonna do the deed. Yeah. Yeah, you still gonna do the deed. Cause, Cause check it out. Did Moses still have to talk? Yes. Yeah. yeah, he he told me to speak to the uh, Aaron's going to speak to the people for him, and yeah. it would be as if it was God and him. It, yeah. it, he used that example, but he still had to perform the signs that God had told him to do. Right. Yeah. So he still had to perform the sign, and he still had to speak. He still had to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He still had to talk. But apparently his brother understood him because God was speaking to Moses and Moses was telling his brother what God said. Um, actually, you know what? That's a good you know, point. Um, but he was still stuttering? Let me, let me see. Let me see. Uh, well, you, well, you know what? See, and, and some people say he might have still been stuttering, but I, I'm still, I mean, we've, we, you know, us preachers, we've preached that for years and Moses was stuttering. I don't know. Moses just, Moses said he didn't talk well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't mean he didn't that talk. Well. Yeah, yeah. It could have just meant he didn't want to talk. Yeah. I deal with people all the time. Oh, you know, Pastor, I can't speak. I hear you speaking all the time. <laughs> you talking everywhere. And all of a sudden, when I say, hey, will you do this? Pastor, you know, I can't talk. <laughs> well, you talking to me now? <laughs> I hear you talking. So, um, somebody, uh, let me see, um, Vicky. Vicky, are you there? Yes, sir. Hey, can you read Exodus four, read 27 through the end of the chapter. So I think that's uh, 31, 27 through 31. Oh, let me, can let me interrupt real quick? Um, go ahead, Mara. I read, I read, I read in here, and I couldn't figure. Out, I don't know. I don't get it. But um, verse twenty-four. Oh wait, hey, hold on. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that. Okay. I, I'm just skipping this because this ties <laughs> in. I, I need twenty-seven through thirty-one just so that we can. I can tie in some okay. something about Aaron. But I'll get back to that. Go and ahead, the Lord. Um, yes, sir. And the Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him on the mountain of God and kissed him. So Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he had uh, commanded him. Then Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel and Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then, uh, then he did the signs in the sight of the people. So the people believed, and when they heard the Lord and visited the children of Israel, that he had looked on their uh, affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshiped. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. So how did Aaron know to go into the wilderness? The Lord told him. The Lord had told him. So I, I just want to say it because I haven't said this all night. Look at God. Yes. Oh, yeah. at God. Divine intervention. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure. I see, you know, this is one of those places where I want to get to heaven and I want to talk to Aaron. I got a lot I want to talk yeah. to Aaron about. But one thing <laughs> I want to talk to Aaron about is, hey, how did you get this word? Because Moses is talking to a burning bush. Uh-huh. And the picture that I have is during the conversation that God is having with Moses, he goes to Aaron and says, yo, man, you ain't seen your brother in 40 years. Yeah. But today, I need you to go see him. Uh-huh. Aaron, is, I mean, Moses ain't posted on Facebook. You know, he, he got him a new cell phone. He ain't talked to his brother. He ain't talked to his family in a long time. That's right. But God knew what yeah. Moses needed. Yeah. And and so that, that gives me such hope. 
that even now as I'm going through what I'm struggling with, God is speaking to somebody and say, because God, even though Moses brought Aaron up, God had already talked to him. Uh -huh. God was setting this up saying, hey, I'm going to use Aaron too, and I'm going to get this together. Yeah. Aaron, yeah. I need you to go out and meet Moses. Yeah. And so the, the, what, what God is doing is God is doing what well, we might want. Well, I need to run and get some help. God, hmm, let God bring you some help. Wow. Because too often we are, we're going to go get some help. I'm going to go get some <laughs> Let God bring you some help. How, how did they, anybody remember with Noah? How did the animals get to the ark? They just walked on up there by themselves. <laughs> two by two. Two by two. Did they walk by themselves? Well, well God, God told them to go up there. The Bible says yeah. God, God sent them. See, God the world will tell yeah. you how Noah go out there and catch all them animals. <laughs> I said them two by two. God <laughs> brought him what was needed. Uh -huh. <laughs> Even before Noah was thinking about it. And Noah might have been thinking, how am I going to get them rabbits in this boat? <laughs> you know, God, you notice God never told him, hey, build the ark and then go get the animals. Yeah, he doesn't. He said, you build the ark, mm -hmm. I'll get the animals. Mm -hmm. And if we would just do what God says do, he will bring us the help that we need. Yes, amen. And he, he spoke to Aaron. He said, Aaron, I need you to go meet him. And then Moses had to tell him. And then Moses had, and they go and they talk to the people. And, oh, everybody, oh, yay. Oh, because check it out. So let me see. Verse 31. Um, let's see, mom, can you read verse 31? So the people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked on their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshiped. Hey, check it out. They believed, and when they believed, they heard. They heard. When they heard. When they heard, people need to hear from you what God is doing. Yes. They need to hear that God has seen their misery. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't seen their misery in judgment. See, here's part of the problem of the church in 2020, 2021. We run around telling how people, God, how mad God is at you. And God wants to say, you know what? He loves you. Oh, no, he might be angry with what you're doing but he loves you and he sees the pain you are going through. But we're not preaching that message. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not preaching that message. We're, we're preaching a message of anger. And that message of anger is again, what God Moses kicked at, kept out of the promised land. Because he pictured God as being mad that he had to provide water. God wasn't mad he had to provide water. He knew there wasn't no water out there. That's why he said, Moses, speak to the rock. There'll be water. Moses, oh, gotta do this for y'all. God's mad at you. I was like, whoa, whoa. That's not what I said. And so when they told the people, they told, he heard, when they heard, what is the world hearing from you about God? I know they're hearing from you about something, about the football game, about what, you know, what's on sale, about what's happening in the news. But what are they hearing from you about God? Just wondering. Okay. All right. Um, real quick, I want to go ahead. I want to deal with um, 18 through um, 26 so that I can help answer uh, Mara's question. Uh, Sister Smith? I hear you. Okay. <laughs> Can you read 18 through 27 for me? 18 through 27. Actually, 26. I'm sorry. 18 through 26. Okay. So Moses went and returned to Jephro. Am I on the right one? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Uh, his, his father in law and said to him, Please let me go and return to my brethren who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. And Jephro said to Moses, go in peace. Now the Lord said to Moses and Midian, go return to Egypt for all the men who sought your life are dead. 
Then Moses took his wife and his son and set them on a donkey, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord says to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in your hand, but I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then you should say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I say to you, let my son go that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed, I will kill your son, your firstborn. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zephora took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at Moses' feet and said, surely you are a husband of blood to me. So he let him go. Then she said, you are a husband of blood because of the circumcision. Okay, so um, so we'll probably continue with this a little bit next week too, because there's some deep stuff here. Um, but I did. I definitely want to hit on this, especially because Mara asked. Um, so Moses, here's Aaron's coming. So he, I'm going to go. So he goes back to his father-in-law. What's he tell his father-in-law? That he's going to see his... Return back to um, Egypt. Egypt. Yeah, go back to Egypt. Why? He wants to see his brother. <laughs> if his family still living. Is that why he's going back to Egypt? No. He oh. lied. Oh. Now, I, I can't decide how I feel about Moses right here. And I got to be honest, I can't decide because we talked about Joseph. You don't tell everybody right. your dreams because everybody can't handle your dreams. Right. And so I, I don't know if if Moses is learning from a Joseph, you know, lesson say, hey, just don't tell everybody everything. But part of me, because of the mo interaction Moses has, I don't see Moses telling him the truth, saying, yo, I'm going back because God has called me. God has sent me. Because mm -hmm. Moses already ain't sure about it. I ain't telling anybody I ain't got to tell. So I, I, I don't know how I feel about Moses. Because again, I, I share with y'all the story about me telling my parents I thought that uh, when I thought I was called into ministry. And I had built it up in my head that they were going to say something bad. And sometimes when I read this from Moses, I, I really feel him saying the same thing. I, you know what? I don't know what Jethro is going to say. So I'm just going to go ahead and just tell him I'm going home to see my family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, he didn't tell him why. Yeah, he and didn't tell him why. And, yeah. and, and so again, uh, and the only reason I mentioned that is because there is a balance. There is a balance between telling people because later on Jethro's going to help out Moses greatly, right. as he tells him. Because Jethro ended up supporting his ministry, uh, and so part of me says Jethro would have been very supportive, yeah, of him. But he convinced himself because why would Jethro listen to me? Now I'm going back here. I don't want to tell him, and so I just want us to be careful about you know trying to be undercover Christians okay <laughs> so so they get ready to go home he gets his wife he gets his uh kids and they go and then the part that then we have this very weird scene that goes on Moses is heading back to do his purpose yeah. and the bible says God gets ready to come kill him yeah. see that's what I'm going what is, is that who Moses is he's going to kill Moses yes I'm, and I'm like, yes. why? He's going well, that's what we're gonna talk about. Good, that's a good question. Glad you asked. <laughs> so he's going to kill Mo. God is coming to kill Moses. But Moses' wife steps in, and what does she do? Circumcises. She circumcises <laughs> the foreskin and throw it at his feet. Okay, so circumcision was given. Anybody remember who circumcision was given to? Abraham, the baby boy. Right. Oh, it was yeah. given to Abraham. Yeah. Or why? Sign of the covenant. As a sign of the covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was given circumcision. So after Abraham, every male who was okay. part of the covenant family was yeah. supposed to be circumcised on the eighth day. Right. This mm -hmm. was a sign that you belonged. Okay. Moses is going back to set God's people free. Mm -hmm. But there's a problem. Moses' son wasn't circumcised? Moses' son wasn't circumcised. Right. Moses was going to lead the people of God. 
without obeying the, the rules of God. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's why he was going to kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, some of us want to do as I say and not as I do. We want to say, hey, do as I say, not as I do. You know, but Moses had not kept the covenant himself. Uh -huh. And so his wife had to step in. So really, this is a men's Bible study topic because I deal with it. You know what, brothers? You Moses' job was to say, make sure that happened. Yeah. But when he didn't do it, his He's wife right. had to step up and do what yeah. he didn't do. And, and so this is a picture of one. It's a picture of the wife being a helpmate. Mm -hmm. And which is really funny because she wasn't Hebrew. Yeah. So somewhere, and I'm pretty sure what happened is Moses told her why he was circumcised. Right. But never yep. to his kids. Yeah. Um, he wasn't raising his family in a way that represented God. And God was like, okay, I want you to go. But you got to go correct. Uh -huh. Don't don't not be saved trying to go out there and get everybody else saved. Don't be willing to speak the truth of God in your house, but want to go out and travel across the world. You need to make sure as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will yeah. serve the Lord. And so when Moses was not doing that, God stepped in. And, you know, again, this is one of those places where we say it. Thank God for obedient women mm -hmm. not just believing women but obedient women because she was obedient to the word that wasn't even given to her uh -huh. and she saved Moses's life uh -huh. because she did what he refused to do which is kind of ironic because Eve cost Adam his life because she did the opposite but that's a whole nother bible study you know we're getting all that. And so, so that, so Mara, does that make sense? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> and you, probably, and you well, know why I probably passed them? Because, uh, you know, I, I was sitting here saying to myself, now Mara's sitting there thinking, well, didn't God know that before he sent him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he did. He did. He did. So, so why I, did, I, is I, this I, a chronological I, thing? Well, why I did know. Moses not? circumcise his son that now that's a he great question and you, we can add that i i speculate that moses didn't circumcise his son because he was done with it i'm running from i'm running from israel yeah. i'm separated i'm not there anymore he wasn't thinking about doing the things of god i mean come on he was he was tending sheep he wasn't planning on going back right it's a product of his complacency a complacency he was, he was a product of his environment they didn't circumcise in midian Right. Yeah. He was probably the only circumcised man around. Exactly. And so he's like, yeah, you know, it's not important. I mean, it's just something we do. Right. And so, yes, you are exactly right. God knew. God knew all of that beforehand. And God put him in a stressing situation. And here's something that, uh, again, that's been coming up all week. God will not, God has no problem bringing darkness because he's already put lights everywhere. God has no problem bringing trouble because he's already given you the answer. Mm -hmm. So here, here's, here's my point. What came first, the serpent to Eve or God's word to Eve? God's word. God's word came first. And so because he gave her his word, he had no problem. People like, well, why would God let the, say, the serpent tempt her? Because God had given her everything she needed to win. He wasn't obedient. She and the only right. problem was he wasn't the fact that the serpent came. It was the fact that she didn't do yeah. what yeah. God had empowered her to do. And so yeah. Moses, but God knew also in the situation, Moses had the word. Mm -hmm. And he brought that through. And now his wife was committed. Because <laughs> listen, we don't we don't do this, but I but I'm going to do it even though you didn't. But you know, so Pastor, after, one of the things that helped me through understanding that part from 24, I just have to remind myself that God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our ways because yeah. I know there are people who are thinking, well, now they done had the conversation at the burning bush. Mm -hmm. God done gave him instruction, gave him power. And then mm -hmm. on his way, on his mission, he's mm -hmm. going to kill him. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so that's the only thing keep me sane because God going to do it the way God do it I, I don't understand everything God does yeah, it would make more sense for us 
my thinking is seeking to kill him is yeah. kind of extreme. <laughs> the wages of sin is. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there were lessons in it that you just so explained to us, Pastor. Yeah, absolutely. You, I, I, absolutely. You can't yeah, go the, lead others in your own house not in order. Yeah, that's and, right. And you that's house in order. And that's what Paul told Timothy. Yeah. If you have leaders in the church, they need yeah. to rule their own house as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. They they need to raise their kids in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Right. And Moses was not doing that. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it seems drastic to us, but again, and I think Sister Smith said it right, his ways are not our ways. I would have had this conversation with him first. Hey, Moses, before you go, I need you to circumcise your son. Right, that's what we would do. <laughs> uh -huh. But Moses made it, but you know what's funny, interesting enough, God made it a family thing. Uh -huh. He made it a family thing. He said that this cannot go forward. And, and the wife, and so again, we have this great picture of a woman of faith stepping up where the man didn't and, and all of us who are in a church in 2021 should understand this heck in the world and the you know we should understand this where women have had to step up so and again that's not a new thing apparently yeah because moses wife had to do it and so so we have that uh thing that where yes where where a brother won't step up so, and, and what this also says about being sent he was sent but he still needed help yeah. Yeah. He, and and remember, funny enough, this is help he didn't even know he needed. Yeah. Because he asked for Aaron mm -hmm. to help him, not realizing he needed his wife to help him even more than he needed Aaron. And so sometimes that tells me we don't recognize the people who we have around us that God has put there to protect us. He's taking this, uh, you know, she don't even, she ain't even Hebrew. She just here, I love her at all, and she's the mother of my children. But no, you need her for more than that. She really is your helpmate. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Um, Exodus 4, any questions, comments? We're going to go ahead and do Exodus 5. I, I'm not going to make this a whole story about Moses, but I just need to round out something in Exodus 5 next week. Um, probably Exodus 5 and maybe just a little bit of Exodus 6 as we continue to do this. But Couple of questions for you. What's in your hand? What has God given you that He's simply asking you to use what I put in you? Um, the next question is what's your excuse? I'm too short, I'm too tall, I'm too black, I'm too old, I'm too young, I I I can't, I'm too busy. In, in, in response to both of those questions, you, it's not about you, it's about what you believe about God. Do you believe God has gifted you? If not, we have an issue. Do you believe that God can make up for your weak places? That's why the writer said, uh, let the weak say I'm strong. Because uh -huh. I might not be strong in my own strength, but I'm not doing this in my own strength. It's not by might or by power, but by his spirit that I do what he made me to do. And you are being sent. And God will bring people. He's already got people in your life to help you. But understand, he wants to use you in a mighty way. He wants to use your gifts, but he also wants to use your tongue. Not to tell people off, but to tell people about him. Because when they hear, then they can believe. Okay? Questions or comments? No, sir. Pastor Payne, yes, I need sir. you to pray for my sister. We had to rush her to the hospital last night. Okay. Will do. Will do. All right. Okay. Um, My name is Vernetta Washington. Vernetta Washington. Okay. Let's pray. Eternal God, you sent us. And we ask your forgiveness right now because we've had so many excuses. And Lord, we've been living a schizophrenic life. One day we say, I can do all things. And the next day we say, I can't do it. 
Mm -hmm. Lord God, help us to align ourselves properly with you and your word. Not trusting in our own ability, but recognizing that you have put things in our hands to use for your glory. Give us the courage to use them, Lord. And where we feel weak and short and not enough, remind us that you are going with us to fill those low places. Lord God, this is a team game, and you're not going to send us anywhere that you're not going to go. And so, Lord, I thank you for that, and I thank you for what we're going to accomplish when we believe what you said. And, Lord, we also believe in the power of prayer. We believe that we can stand in the gap and represent you before people and represent people before you. And so right now we're representing Sister Vernetta Washington as she goes to the doctor. Lord God, you are the best doctor. You are Jehovah Rapha the God who heals. And so, Lord, I pray that you will touch her right now, that you will touch every place that is not right, every cell that is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Lord God, you do what only you can do. And if you have, if medicine is involved, that's fine. If doctors have to help, okay. But we are praising you now because we believe the healing is already happening. We thank you, God, for loving her so much and loving us so much that you'd hear us as we stand in the gap for her. We are coming boldly to the throne of grace that we might receive mercy and grace in due time. We need your grace now, Lord, move in a mighty way. And not just in her life, but in all of our lives. Because we have not done everything you sent us to do. But now, Lord, tonight, the 3rd of February, 2021, we are setting our faces to be the men and women of God you sent us to be. Thank you, God, for the wonderful things that are about to happen as we live a sent life. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. amen. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time and attention. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Miss Hi. Elizabeth. Yes. Miss Elizabeth. Yes, ma'am. You know I finished the book. Praise the Lord. <laughs> did you enjoy the book? I, I did. I did. Good, good. It was good. I knew y'all uh, would, would talk about stuff that I didn't want to know about yet. Yes. Yeah. And it was yeah. a, the, the ending was an eye opener, wasn't it? Well, it, it, it was, but I actually expected that ending uh -huh. to happen. Okay. No, between Matt and, and, and Hannah. Between Matt and Hannah. Oh, okay. Okay. But, I, I, yeah. I was surprised at the grandmother. Yeah, it's the she was the that was the devil, wasn't it? <laughs>